My name is Samer Mohammed. I grew up in Palestinian refugee camp in Lebanon. If you don't know what that means, in 1948, my family came from Israel. And my father, that time he's nine years old, he came and the Lebanese gave him a tent with many Palestinians. And I grew up there in this Palestinian camp. And I grew up with a small family, six brothers and six sisters. <laughs> and when I am, we are Muslim, and I saw in my house a lot of gun. And later I know my father, he, he leader with Yasser Arafat, he take, um, in 80 and 70, he, ate, he take a young people from my camp to go to fight Israel and come back. And still right now, my, my father, he, uh, he died when I'm 12, but still right now, I have five brothers, he worked the same job in Palestinian camp. I grew up with full of hate for Israel, for the American. I want to tell you something. Why this happened with me? Because the Bible teach us the Israeli take our land. We need to kill the Israeli. We need to kill the, I'm sorry to say that, we need to kill the American because America helped Israel to take our land. Right now, I, I want to tell you something. I am without nationality. But I thank God. Now I have a new Jerusalem in heaven. And in my Palestinian camp, I don't see anything, only everything, darkness. I want to die for Allah. And I go to the mosque every day. And for anyone, what I need to be in the future, I say I want to be Imam. I want, I love Allah. I love Allah. I love, I love to serve my religion. And I went to study with the school called Wahhabi. This is bar from Al-Qaeda or ISIS, the same teaching. And I study with these people for a year, and there is my life is a change from Muslim to Muslim radical to follow the Quran and follow Muhammad. And I want to show you now my picture when I am 19 with, with the robe, with the, this is my picture. And I am full of hate. Uh, when, when I am this people, I came more hate. I am ready to die for Allah. And also I go in my Palestinian camp every day, five times, I open the mosque and I am the one make the calling, the calling pray. You know this, Allah, I do that. And sometimes if my imam is not there, I am the leading the worship, the pray. I remember when something happened in Israel or in America, 11 September or anything, me and with many uh, a big money friend from Palestinian camp, we go to the street and we dance, we give people candy because we see in the news some American or some Israeli killed and, and we're happy because we need to kill these people. In my Palestinian camp, we have 30,000 30, Palestinians, we are Muslim, we don't have a Christian. Only I heard about the Bible when I am a study the, in the Sharia law, I, I heard about the Bible. And one day the Imam came and he told us about this is Bible is not from God. And he told us about the Christian, he worshiped three God and this and this. And I remember me and some friend, we coming to the Imam after the school and we ask him, we can look and see the Bible? Only we need to look, he said, no, not somebody can read the Bible. Only the big imam, he can read the Bible. Because this is not from God, this is from Satan. We're not allowed to read the Bible. One day, I am out of my Palestinian camp, and there is Lebanese, and in Lebanon, we have Christian and Muslim. And I walk, and one man coming to me, and he starts telling me about Jesus. And I look to him, Say, you don't look to me? I, you don't know who I am? I am the man, I, I open the mosque, I am the good Muslim. Why are you coming to me to tell me about your Jesus? You're not shy about your Jesus? You worship three God and this. And he start, he said to me, I want to give you the Bible. I say, no, I don't believe this is the word of God. I don't want this book. 
And he started to speak with me, and I came more angry because I want to kill him. Why is he coming to me to tell me about his Jesus? We have the truth. And he say, if you don't want to read the Bible, it's okay. I say, you know what? I want to take this book. I don't believe this is the word of God, but I want to know what my enemy believe. This can help me in the future when I be imam. But in the same time, I'm afraid from my Palestinian people and also my imam because, you know what? Maybe, I don't know if you know that. In the Middle East or in the Saudi Arabia or the Muslim, you're not allowed to read the Bible. You're not allowed to bring the Bible. Now if you go and bring five, six Bible to Saudi Arabia, you're not allowed to go to jail. You know why? You know, you know why we're not allowed to read the Bible? Because the enemy, the Satan, he know because there is the power in this book. The power of God. Because he don't want the Muslim to see the truth. Because there, what's happening with me when I'm reading the Bible, God store open my eyes. And this is what the enemy, he don't want the Muslim to know the truth. We're not allowed to read the Bible. I take the Bible. From, from this man, George, and I put him in my jacket and I went to my Palestinian camp, closed the door, closed the window, and the first thing, I'm, I smell the Bible because I'm, uh, to, uh, 20 years people uh, tell us about this book, I'm afraid from this book, and I still smell the Bible and reading. When I'm reading the Bible, I go to the mosque, I'm reading the Bible, and I put the Bible in my, in my room in, in, in the bed because it's not easy. We, we thank God for the freedom you have here in America. You can carry the Bible, but we're not, we're not easy, my brother and sister. And I'm reading the Bible. When I'm reading the Bible, I find something. This is the first time I heard about. In Matthew 5, 6, 7, when Jesus teaches, love your enemy, bless your enemy. Love your enemy. My Allah say, kill your enemy. What kind of God he say, love your enemy? And the teaching of Jesus, God is love. We have 99 names, the name of Allah in the Islam. We don't find one name, God is love. Also, I'm, 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 I'm reading the Bible, go to the mosque, I'm Muslim. But God start open my eyes. Because this is the word of God, you know? And not somebody can tell me about Jesus, but this is the word of God. And God can, can do this, can, can, his spirit can come to my heart and I can, I can, he can open my eyes to see what's happening. I find in the Bible, if you, need, if you need any question, call this number. And I call the man and say, listen, I have many questions. And he say, yes, come, I want you to meet with some friend. We have meeting and you can meet with some friend. And I don't know what, 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 what that means, meeting, because I, don't, I know that the, the Christian go to church and pray. And I went there and surprised me, the people who want to pray for Jesus. And I, the first thing when I'm there in the room, Two questions coming to me. Why these people love me and get, show me love? And oh, welcome, welcome. And for me, I want to kill these people and this is my enemy. Why these people? Because when people start worship the Lord, <laughs> for, for them, Jesus, I saw the people have peace and joy. I don't have this peace when I go to the mosque. I start, I want this peace, I want this job, but I don't. When I go to the mosque, I'm afraid from Allah. I don't know if God, he loves me or he wants to take me to the hell or to the heaven. Always in the, in, in the God of Islam, God, he wants to judge you, he wants to take you to the hell, he, he wants you know, to, uh, to be dying. But I find something different here. And I start asking many questions. My dear brother and sister, one and a half year, I am reading the Bible, reading some Christian book, and I am Muslim. I go to the mosque. After one and a half year, I have confusion. Before, I have the truth, 
But after I'm reading the Bible and I'm reading some Christian book, God starts to open my eyes. And I go to the mosque. I still have confusion. I, I, and, the, and the last time when I go to the mosque, I don't pray the Muslim pray. I pray in the mosque, Lord, where is the truth? You are Jesus, Isa, or in Muhammad, and you are Allah. Where is the truth? I am tired. And I go to my imam, and I start asking him some questions. I, I ask him, oh, we are Muslim. We believe G, uh, Jesus, we call him Isa. He wants to come to judge the world in the end. Because the Muslim believe he in the heaven, he not died, he in the heaven, and he wants to come to judge the world in the end. My question, I ask him, why he coming? Why, why, why not Muhammad coming? Why, 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 why him? Why, why he want to judge us? And I start asking him a lot of questions about the Quran, about Jesus, about the Christianity. And he looked to me, he say, Samer, why you ask me a lot of questions? What's happening with you? I say, because I'm reading the Bible. And he say, the Bible? Where do you find the Bible? Because you're not allowed to read the Bible. And, and I told him what's happening with me. I tell him, I meet this man and he give me the Bible. And he looked to me. He said, I have a question. Did this man, he tell you, if you be Christian, we give you money or car or wife or uh, anything? I say, no. He say, really? I say, yes. He say, okay, did you drink with them coffee or tea? He, I say, yes, a lot. He say, oh, this is this man, he bought you something in the coffee or tea to be Christian. <laughs> really? And still right now, my family, if you, uh, if you meet one of my family, my family say, oh, we love Samer, but something happened with him. The Christian bought uh, something. In the, really, this is what my mom believes. And because these people who don't know the power of Jesus, these people who don't know the grace of Jesus come to me and share my life because these people live in the darkness. But when God come to you and the grace of God coming to you and change you, not, can, but not, not somebody can stop, about, stop God what he do in my life. And that time I say, yeah, maybe. Because if you look to my, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be, <laughs> I used to be now. But God, grace coming to me. And I say, yeah, maybe. And he put me in the floor with, he bring another imam and he start reading from the Quran to the spirit of a Christian to leave me. And he came to my house, take the old the Bible, the old the, the Christian um, uh, book. And he say, don't be connected with these people anymore because these people, he want to take you to the hell. You, want, you should kill these people. And I go to the mosque. I still have confusion. I am not a Christian. I'm not Muslim. And after one month, I visit my friend George and told him, I told him what's happening with me. And you know what? Every Muslim, not only me, my brother and sister, we're not allowed to leave Islam because the sword in our neck. You know, it's, it's not easy. The spirit of fear, you know, the sword. And, and, and you know, now many Muslims who don't believe in Islam, but the people who want, who don't want to say that because the sword, the Islam come by sword. And I'm afraid, I told George, I say, George, I don't can, be, I don't can believe what you believe. He said, but you now one and a half year, you're coming here and you read the Bible. You want to take decision to follow Jesus or Muhammad? I say, no, because the people want to kill me. How I can live with my family? And that time, I stay with him and he started encouraging me to follow Jesus. 2001. July 14, when I am with my friend George, I pray the prayer of salvation. And I accepted Jesus to be my Savior and my God. And, amen. Almost now 15 years, 
and the story is finished? No, for me, this is the, be the beginning. He gave me a small Bible. I went to my house in Palestinian camp, and my brother coming to me, he say, Samer, I want to talk with you. My, your imam, he told me he find Bible in, in the house. And he say, you come from where? And he find Bible, and he say, I don't can believe you. You are the one tell us to be good Muslim and go to the mosque. And now you have Bible and you go to church? What's happening with you? These people put you something in the coffee to be Christian. And in this time, I need somebody to encourage me to follow Jesus more and more. And my mom, she came. And my mom, she said, it's not easy. Really, it's not easy. My, you live here. Everybody, maybe one in your family, he can believe everything you want. he wants. But in us, no. My mom, she started crying. My brother, he say, if you don't come to the mosque and tell the, all the people, I need to come back to, to the Islam, I will kill you. And we have gone in my house. And he can do that because he makes service for Allah. And this is what Jesus tells us. He tried many times to kill me. A lot of things happened with me in my life, in my home. And I want to tell you something. 15 years now, I don't live with my family. And that time, I'm in Lebanon. He bought me in the, in the roof, my house, with that cut in my hand. My mom, 10 years ago, she died. And I am in Lebanon, two hours from, 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 from where I live. Because I don't can come to my Palestinian camp. Because the, all the Palestinian, no government there. The, all the Palestinian and the all Muslim and people, he think I am shame for the Palestinian. I should be, should be killed. And I don't can come to see the funeral of my mom. Now if I look in the street, if I saw some children, I don't know if this is my brother's son. I, I don't know them. I've been in jail in Lebanon three times. I stay in the street. Sometimes the Christian people, who don't believe you are a Christian. Because people, this is what's happening with Paul. And the Barnabas coming and he bring him to the Christian. He start encouraging them. Because sometimes we don't believe God still work. And God is still save people. A lot of things happen with me. In YouTube, right now, you, 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 go, you Google it in Arabic. But infidel Samer Muhammad, you can find my picture and song from Al-Qaeda, song from Al-Qaeda people, and uh, the imam, my imam, against me in half an hour in YouTube. Still right, we remove some still right now. People want to kill me. Why? Because I speak in some television about Islam. Why the Imam he say, oh, I speak the Islam, the religion is not peace. Oh, okay, and he want to kill me because I say the Islam is not the religion of peace. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> and now I came here to America now, three years now I live here, I have asylum. A lot of things happen with me, but you, if you ask me, but why are you still... People want to kill you. A lot of things happen with you. Why still walk with Jesus? The one thing keep me now walk with Jesus, not because I'm reading the Bible and I find the truth. This is a little bit bad. Help me. But the one keep me now walk with Jesus because 15 years I test him who is the Jesus for me. He's not, he's not in a story. He's real. He's still alive. He's with me. He's, this is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. I can tell you story, every story, every story, 15 years he with me. We worship through God. He's real. Maybe if you don't feel it, I encourage you today, you want to meet with Jesus. Maybe you're born a Christian. But it's not enough. Maybe you read the Bible. It's not enough. You want to be, you meet, you meet with him. 
Because he can change your life. After I coming to Jesus, four years, I visit a small island in Europe called Cyprus. And I want to speak in the Arabic conference there. And in the break time, I walk in the street and I take, I have camera at that time. And because the first time in my life, I am out of my uh, Palestinian camp. And I take some picture and I saw garden. And because, you know, my culture, I coming uh, to the to the house. I don't know that this. Ha- I don't know this house. I don't know these people. This is the first f- the first time for me that time in Cyprus. And I knock in the door and the man open for me. He say, "How I can help you?" And I say, "You can take. Uh, uh, I want to take some picture in your garden." And he say, "Okay." And he helped me to take some picture. And he say, "You come from where?" And I told him I'm from Lebanon, and I'm coming to speak in this conference, Arab conference. He said, oh, we are a Christian too. I am pastor from America. Come, you can meet with my family. And I stayed, drink coffee with his wife, with his family. And he said, but you are Lebanese? I said, no, I'm Palestinian, but I born and grew up in, in, in Lebanon. And he looked to his wife, and he said to me, you know who we are? I say, yeah, you are from America, you are a missionary here. He say, yes, but we are Jews, believe in Yeshua, believe in Jesus. I say, what? I drink coffee with the Jewish people? <laughs> and he's, because this is the first time in my life I saw Jews. Jewish is good, you know. <laughs> Listen to this story. And he say, Brother Samer, you can come tomorrow. I am um, uh, do. Uh, we do ministry here. We have a lot of uh, young people coming to do training school here to study the Bible. You can come and you can share your testimony. And I say, okay. I coming to the Arab conference. I don't know this man, but God is not finished it with me yet. And I coming to speak with this young people. And one man coming to me and he starts speak with me Arabic. And I say, from where you know Arabic? I put my hand to his hand. I say, oh, from where you know Arabic? He say, oh, you know, in my country we have a lot of Arab. I say, oh, wow, you from where? I say, he say, I'm from Israel. I say, what? <laughs> Israel? I put my hand. Yes, I believe in Jesus that time, 2005. But I still hate Israel. But he's not finished it with me. Because when God, he wants to change you, he changes you completely. And that time, because I live in Lebanon, and for me, if you don't know that, in, in Lebanon, if we, we don't have any connection with we are enemy. And if the government, he know, I meet with the Israeli in Europe, I've been in jail. We're not allowed to talk with the Israeli. And the pastor coming to me, he said, I'm sorry, Brother Samer. I don't, because he, I came more nervous. He said, I'm sorry, Brother Samer, I don't tell you that. We have six young people from Israel, and we are the old Jews believing in Yeshua here. And I said, what? I'm coming to the Arab conference. Why I need to come here and share my testimony with this, my enemy? And I share my testimony. And I told him, if I come here before five years, I make bomb here. A big bomb here too. Don't don't, don't be happy. (laughs) Really? (laughs) And after I'm sharing my testimony, five young people from Israel coming to me in the stage and told me, Brother Samer, in the name of the Israel nation, please forgive for us. We are sorry what's happened with you and your family. And now, in the name of the Israel, help us to wash your feet. And I look to the, when people bring the water and coming, I don't can believe my Israeli, I want to kill them, and these people who want to wash my feet. I want to show you the picture now. When the people coming, I start wash my feet. 
I started crying. And that time, the Holy Spirit opened my heart and make operation. And he take the all the head for Israel and give me special love for this nation. <laughs> Who can do that? Maybe God give you love to India or Philippines or any country. But I'm not, I don't speak politic here. As a Palestinian, as before Muslim, God give me love for Israel. And now I'm proud to say, I'm not speak politic. I love Israel. I love Jews. I love to preach him about Yeshua, about the Messiah. Who can do that? Yeah. Muhammad? Any religion? The Jews? Only Jesus can do that. And now in the Middle East, 70 years, the Arab and the Jews fighting about the land. And the American and many countries want to help them. What we need to do? 70 years now. Nothing happened. You know what is the answer? The answer I know. I find the answer when the Arab and the Jews coming to Yeshua, coming to Jesus. There is peace and there is shalom. Without Jesus, no peace. Without Yeshua, no peace. This is what God tells us. In vision, in the cross, gentle and Jewish, we met. And there is peace because he's our peace. This is our Lord and Savior. This is Jesus. He still work. He, maybe you don't feel it, but I want to tell you, the book of Acts is not closed yet. God is still today and yesterday and forever. He still do miracles. What you doing? What you see now in the Middle East? What you see in the CNN and Fox News? You see ISIS people kill each other, fighting the Islam. The, a lot of things happen. This is what you see, yes. But I want to tell you something. I thank God. What's happened now in the Middle East and with ISIS? You know why? Because in the last time. Now many Muslims say, ISIS killing people and ISIS follow the Quran and follow Muhammad. And this is my religion? If this is my religion, I don't want to be Muslim anymore. And now this is the time for us to go and share the good news for them. And now I want to tell you something. I'm not lying, I'm not, you know, speak all in the media or something. A thousand of thousands of Muslims coming to Yeshua, coming to Jesus. God doing amazing work in the Middle East. Maybe you don't feel the revival here, but I want to tell you the revival is starting in the Middle East. A thousand of Muslims coming to Jesus, my brother and sister. And you know what? And also it's not easy for them. It's not easy because... The sword of the Islam, the Islam coming by sword. I want to, to show you some picture now. I've been, my heart still in the Middle East. Three months ago, I've been, I, I've been in Turkey, in the border of Syria and Iraq. And I want to show you some picture. This is your brother and sister are from Iraq, and this people left Iraq because of ISIS. He said to them, if you don't be Muslim, we kill you, or you, we need to leave the country. And this is you Christian from Iraq. We help them. We make uh, some barbecue for them. About 150 family. Another picture, please. This is the... Uh, uh, we make package of food for the people from Syria, and we also we give him Bible. We show love of Yeshua, love of Jesus. This is the Arabic Bible. I take it with me here from New York. This is your brother. This is from Kurdish from Syria. This is. Some family, this is, this is believer in Jesus. And this is the meeting. This is the meeting in the house. And we, it's, not, it's not easy. 
because if the police in Turkey he saw we, we meet, this is go the all these people and I'm with them, we, we go to jail and we can breach there in jail too. This is <laughs> this is in the border before the people go to Europe, uh, what we do, we give people water, we give people food. And we, we, we give, we share. You see this, this young two people? People hungry because people tire from the Islam. And people hungry to know about the hope and love of Jesus for them. You see? You see, this is not in New York. This, this is in Turkey. And people open for the gospel. We bring, I want to tell you a story. When we give food for people, one man coming to me and he say, because sometimes it's danger a little bit, and one man coming to me, he say, from where this food? Who are you? As I say, I'm from America, and this is from a Christian from America to help you guys. And he say, you know who I am? I am Muslim, and you help me? I say, yes. He say, why? Why you help us? The Saudi Arabia and Qatar, he have a lot of money and these people who don't give us food. And you from uh, America, Christian, and you coming here to us to help us. And you see, we say you are infidel people, we need to kill you guys. Why you help us? As I say, I want to tell you why I open for him the teaching of Jesus. How Jesus tell us, love your enemy, bless your enemy. And he say, I want this book. I can have this book. And God opened his heart for the gospel. You see, you see this child, he looked to me, he looking for hope. This is what God doing, my brother and sister in the Middle East. And you think this is how the, the Ravji lived there. And, and God willing, I'm going in the end of February. I still wait for my travel document. I'm, I'm going there and I need to do their uh, school because now is the big need there. You know what? The big need is not to preach about Jesus. The big need now, disciple. And I'm going there to stay two or three months to, uh, to, to uh, make a training school. I want to encourage you to see this video in this video, you can see your brother and sister from Syria in the middle of suffering in Syria coming a baptized in the water, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the beach. You see how God's doing? I want to tell you and this is every day people coming to Jesus. Maybe you don't feel here the revival in America, but I want to tell you our God is not sleeping. Our God is working. Maybe you don't feel it because you don't connect. But he still works. You have brother and sister suffering. Also, I want you not only to uh, enjoy that, I want you to encourage you to pray for the Muslim background believer in the Middle East is suffering. People in jail. 
Not because something wrong, but because we will say, I want to follow Jesus. Pray for them. My brother and sister, sometimes we say, I, I'm here almost three years in America. And if you say, what, I'm sorry, I want to open my heart with my broken English. And sometimes I say, God, why you bring me here? In, uh, my heart in the Middle East, I, I thank God for America. But my heart in the Middle East, why you bring me here to America? And God now opened for me many, many doors to speak in many church. For one thing, to tell you and to tell the, all the American church, you need to wake up. You need to wake up. You know why? Because I, I see here in America, I'm sorry to say that, Pastor, I see here in America, the Christianity is now culture. I coming to church, uh, we have Bible, uh, we go to the home, we pray before food. This is the Christian. This is what I'm sorry. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is not what I, we find in the Bible. We need to be hard for Jesus. We need to be bold for Jesus. You know what? You know what? I heard now a lot of people, a lot of pastors. He say, "We don't need a refugee. We don't need the Muslim people here." Because this danger, I agree with you, this is danger. And the Islam is danger, you know why? Because you don't do your job. And your job is to preach him about Jesus. And these people, they need love of Jesus. Why you don't go and preach the gospel for them? How these people, you want to hear about Jesus if you don't speak about Jesus? If this man, George, he don't tell me about Jesus... Maybe I am with ISIS. If he say, oh, he's Muslim, maybe he will kill me if I tell him about Jesus. What but Paul say in, in, in Romans 10? How he need these people to hear if not somebody tell him. God tell us, go and preach the gospel in the, all the world. And we, some people, we thank God for them, go and preach the gospel. And some people stay here and sleeping. And God now bring the Muslim next to your door and oh no 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 I don't can speak him about Jesus. Are you shy about your Jesus? Or maybe he's not real. Maybe he's not real. If the, if Jesus change your life, if Jesus save you, why you keep Jesus for you only? You know what? Every believer in Jesus. Every man, every woman, we have mission to do. And our mission is to take our gospel and to go and preach the gospel. My brother and sister, behalf of the all the Muslim nation, I want to tell you, why you don't tell us about your Jesus? Why you keep Jesus for you only? I pray this evening God can put you be bold for Jesus. Oh, but people will kill us. Oh, yes, hallelujah. We go to Jesus if people kill us. You know what? The spirit of fear is not from God. You know that. The spirit of fear is from the Satan. And God, he don't give us the spirit of fear. We have something to claim. Jesus is the Lord. And now here in America, the politic people speak about the refugee, about Islam, about oh, what Obama is Muslim, is this, is this. Is. I don't want to speak politic. I want to tell you something. Don't wait for the politic people can change America. Don't wait for them. You! Me, everyone here, as a Christian, we need to stand. We can claim America for Jesus. We can go and share and pray for America. Don't wait for Donald Trump. Don't wait for Obama. Do your job. We are sleeping. And I, I'm sorry to say that. I'm nothing. 
I grew up, but you know my story, Palestinian camp. I, I want to kill the Christian, but where I am now, I'm here in the stage in Ohio, and I speak about Jesus, and I want to tell you, wake up and preach the gospel. You, you want as a Palestinian coming to you and say, shaking you and say, this is the voice of the Lord, my brother and sister. We are, yes, I don't say, you know, the Islam is good. No, the Islam come by sword. This is clear because this is the Quran say, kill your, the, 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 in the Quran say, kill your enemy. Really? And you have, you have a book here called the Quran and teach the Muslim. This is in the Quran. He teaches the Muslim, kill your enemy. And who is the enemy of the Islam? Everyone, he don't believe in Muhammad. He don't believe in Islam. And what this book say? We need to kill everyone who don't believe in Muhammad. Okay. And we have a lot of Muslims here. And some Muslims say, no, this is not, this is not our book. The, our book is the Islam, the religion of peace. Before the storm came, we need to wake up and preach the gospel. Because I heard in Michigan, in Detroit, you're not allowed to, to go and preach the gospel for Muslims. What's happened in the Middle East can be happening here in America if we don't wake up. And already start. In New York, in 11 September, after that, people bring a million of million of dollars to building mosques there. People are not shy because it's a victory for them. I've been in, in uh, after I visited Turkey three months ago, I've been in Germany. And now in Europe, oh, Europe, I don't, Europe is not a Christian country anymore because the Islamic growing, growing, growing there. And now a million of million. Because I, I can tell you something, I don't, I, don't, I don't care about politics, thing, but I want to tell you something. I've been in Turkey, and you know what? The government of Turkey helped the refugee to go to Europe because the president of Turkey, he has an agenda to claim Europe for Islam. Because, you know, you, we don't can come by sword, but we can bring people there and we can change. And when I am in Germany, I meet a brother, he works with the government, he's German, he said to me, you know, Brother Samir, we receive from the government of Saudi Arabia money not for food for the refugee, money building mosque. Building mosque. My brother and sister, God, he wants us not only to save us and we wait for Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, we wait for Jesus to go to the heaven now. Oh, and maybe I don't want to be pastor. Maybe I don't want uh, to be in the choir. But I want to tell you, we don't want this up to you. But every Christian, he has a mission. We need to be witness. We need to speak about Jesus.